Yes, yes,
to ensure that young people of any race, young people are protected from this type of crime. They must be able to travel their roads, they must have, be able to go to school, traveling school buses, they must be able to go to the back dam, live ordinary lives. We're not at war, this is not a civil war. This is one country, and for the last five years, we struggle to build social cohesion, we struggle to, to treat everybody equal. Nothing like this ever happened for five years. Barely a month and a half. This is not a force. Barely a month and a half. This is not a force for the poor set of people that these people feel in the Well, my brothers, I said, the other thing. We, yeah, all lives matter. All lives matter. And we must make sure that we can protect ourselves and our communities. What you all are doing here is the correct response to a crime. And the government must protect all citizens, whoever they are, wherever they are. It is not happening. It's not happening. And if the government does not do its duty to protect our citizens, we must protect ourselves. There must be good action too. And we must give support to our sister. We must give support to the families. We must give support to all people, school children traveling in the school bus. We must give support. All Guyanese must be able to walk freely in this country. And this is not the only problem, comrades. You know, I tell you, from the 11th of March, when the first person died from COVID, to the time we left office, on the 2nd of August, 20 people died. Now, in six weeks, 27 people died. In 20 weeks, 20 people died. Now in a month and a half, a month and a week, 27 people died. The government is not looking after human beings, not looking after our people. And this is the worst case of not protecting our citizens. And I ask you to continue to give support to our sister and to the family. I ask you to continue to bring pressure against this government to make sure that there is no repetition, there is no recurrence of this crime, and all citizens will be able to live in peace in this community and in every region. I ask the leader of the opposition, Joe Harmon, um, to make some remarks. He's already made a statement, it's published in the newspaper. And we will bring this to the attention of Mr. Ali and the government of the day. No? Thank you. Justice, justice, justice. All right, today, today while we clap, it's not a day for celebration. No. Today is a very sad day. Morning. Today is a day when we mourn the loss of two lives two young men two black young men whose lives were snuffed out we don't know who the perpetrators are we have our suspicions and therefore i call on the police to do a very thorough investigation of this matter but we will not leave it there because we know that the police and the investigative arm of the Guyana police force they have infiltrated that arm with some of the known thugs who have now gone into police investigation. So we will have to insist that there be an independent investigation, independent forensic work that is done on this matter. So that the evidence which is acquired, nobody can hide it and duck it. All right, all right. You can't hide it and duck it. So we have to be very vigilant. In my statement last night, I call on you to be vigilant, but allow the police to do its work. 
right. So we'll give them an Thank opportunity you. to do the work, but we must remain vigilant. Thank you. We must stand firm on where we are. Yes. Response, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It's a correct response to a situation which has been left, as President Green just said, since the 6th of March to Festa, where they have not allowed proper investigations to be done into matters which occur in your communities. This morning, I want to say also that in the statement, we said we will offer as much uh, help and support to the family. And so this morning, I want to say to you, ma'am, that we will take the opportunity to assist with the burial expenses. That's what a caring, that's what a caring administration does. So don't let nobody come in here afterwards and tell you they're gonna do this and they're gonna do that. You and the farm you tell them. Glory. You tell them that the AP and the AFC coalition already yes. take care of that. Yes. Yes. We already take care of that. Yes. Yes. So I ask of you to remain vigilant. And as President Granger said, there are some things which we have to do as a community. Yes. And we have to work to keep our community safe. This is our responsibility. Later on, sometime later on today, we'll speak about some other matters. But for now, we are in mourning. We are our community is mo in mourning, yeah. and the government ought to feel ashamed sure, yeah. of what is happening. Yeah. 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 They yeah. should yeah. feel ashamed yeah. because yeah. they have created an environment yeah. in which they have created an environment in which people feel they can do these things and That's get away with right. it. Correct is right. Those days are done. Yeah. Correct is right. Those days are done. And this is why we are here this morning, Mr. Yeah. Granger. Um, uh, Honorable Miss Nicola Henry, former minister. Well, she is coming from family side. Um, Mrs. Brooms is there this morning. Yeah. Our MPs are here. Yes. Uh, we have a, one of our MPs here, and um, um, Mary, Mr. Jordan, Vince Roy Jordan. And so, what we are saying is that we will have this kind of representation. Every time something happens anywhere in this country, yes. the representation will be yes. there. Yes. Yes. Your members all of right, parliament right. you are voting for, I your party, and your coalition will always be there, standing side by side with you. Yes. We will not allow these things to go un unchecked. We will stand with you, we will fight with you, and we will ensure that justice is served. That's right. That's right. That is what I want to say this morning for now. And um, later on you hear all the things, but... Uh, we've already issued two clear statements to not only the Air Force Ali administration, but for the international community. Many of them who have allowed this to go on and check and sort of turn the blind eye to certain things, we are showing them this is what has happened here since the 2nd of August up to now. How bad this country has become in a very short space of time yeah. under an uncaring, fraudulent government. All right. So, but you can do it like perform, but not for as long as you like. So, my colleagues, my family, my friends, I want to say to you that we are here with you, we are standing by you, and that we will stand by you throughout all of this. We will ensure that justice, we will ensure that justice is served, and justice must be served. This family must feel that justice has served them. And it's not just burying them, it is after what happens after that. The persons are responsible. And we have some good lawyers here, Darren and some of the other lawyers. We are going to make sure that the proper civil proceedings are fought against those who are found guilty, that there must be different damages paid to these families for the loss and the suffering which they have had as a result of these incidents. So that's all I wish to say this morning. And I ask you again to remain vigilant. We will. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Yes,
for the Henry family, for number 10 and number 5 villages, for West Coast Babies, whole country. Mm -hmm. Very sadly for all of us. Mm -hmm. And first of all, we give our condolences to the parents, um, the Henry family parents and parents of the, the two boys. Two good Christian boys with the names of our prophets, you know, Isaiah and Joel, taken straight from the Bible. But yesterday was Sunday or Sabbath day. It was a sad day to learn about the tragedy that occurred in this region. And we've come to extend our sympathy and condolences to the Henry family. But we'd also come here to support the whole community in the action that it has taken to protest against this crime. A few minutes ago, I said that if the government wouldn't protect us, we need to protect ourselves. Yes. We are going to set up a self-defense society so that in the future, any incident like this will get an immediate response. My brothers and sisters, we all know what happened in the same West Coast, West Coast um, bodies. On Friday the 6th of March, when innocent school children yes. traveling yes. in a bus was stoned. Yes. And if the government of the day taken action to condemn that crime, and to prevent the recurrence, this would not have happened. But they kept quiet. But some of the people out there thought this is normal behavior. They could do it again and again. Yes. Well, I think today you have sent a message to the country that we're not going to put up with this nonsense. And in less than six weeks, the people are ignoring the legitimate needs of our population. All lives matter. Not only some lives, all lives matter. And we have to take collective action as we are doing today to make sure there is no recurrence. Our children must be able to go about their business in safety. Our young people must be protected from this type of criminal behavior. Yes. And if they can't protect me, we'll put form a self-defense society yes. to help to protect our villages and communities. Yes. We can't reverse what has happened, but we will do our utmost to prevent a recurrence. I'll ask um, the leader of the opposition, Joe, to speak about some other matters. But you are not alone. You are not alone. Our entire party, our entire coalition is with you. And we are going to continue to bring pressure to bear on this government until they understand that all lives matter and that we are not going to put up with this type of criminal behavior. It is their attitude. If on the 6th of March they condemned what happened here in West Coast, Babies, the stoning of the school buses, and the, the vandalism that occurred. This would not have occurred. But they are sending a message that that sort of behavior is normal. They could do it again and again. So, my brothers and sisters, stay strong. We are behind you, and we will extend every possible support. And I will now ask um, Colonel Harmon, the leader of the opposition, to say a few words. But bear in mind, that we are launching today a self-defense society to protect our community. Yes. Yes. We call on the government yes. to protect us, and if the government does not give us the full protection that we deserve, 
we are going to take any reasonable measure to defend ourselves and our children. Once again, on behalf of my party, the People's National Congress, I extend our sincere sympathy to the mother and father, and we will provide every support. Joe? Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President, and people of the West Coast, Barbies. This morning is a sad morning for me and for all of Guyana. All of the right-thinking people of Guyana. Let me say that. Because there are some people who are not right-thinking. They think that they can do anything and get away with it. Because as far as they're concerned, it's free government in power. Yes. Yes. But that is not going to work. Yes. Uh, no. Yes. Yes. That's not going to work. Yes. Yes. So now, the President spoke about the 6th of March incident. And uh, I want to let you understand why it is that some people feel that they have this power to injure, to damage, yes. and get away with it. Yes. Because after that incident, I called on the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution to say what has happened about the prosecution of these people that damage these buses, that injured those two children, that damaged police officers who are in the, the duty. And nothing came out of it. They told me that it was difficult to trace who are the perpetrators. That is what they said. And now, so, I want to say to you that I want to say to you that we are standing by you in this action. Here in, in the community as well. One person who was of Indian descent because they chose to stand firm with this coalition. They burned down the butcher shop. Burn it down. We well, build it back. We build it back. And, and any things like that which occurs. Even though our resources might be very limited, we want to give you the assurance that we will stand by you and we will help you to rebuild your lives. Today we cannot bring back those two lives which were lost. But we stand in support of the family. We stand in support of your resolve to ensure that dignity remains in this community. That nobody could take the eyes and pass you and believe they can do so with impunity. We are going to confront them. And as the, the president said that if the government cannot provide us with all the security we need, we will form our own self-defense. It is the duty of the state, it is the duty of the state to provide security for our foreign citizens. It is your duty. And when you are going to turn a blind eye to the injustices that are taking place in these particular communities, then certainly we will have to make it very clear that we're not going to accept that. And, and we are, what we have done also is that we have internationalized. We have internationalized all of this. So what is happening in number three? What is happening in number five? By the time it happens, people in New York, people in Switzerland, people all over the world, they are seeing it. And we will keep the pressure on the government to make sure they take the knees off of our necks. Finally, I want to say to the family again that uh, yesterday, I issued a press release on behalf of the coalition and in that press release I stated that we will provide as much support to the family and that we will ensure that we take every and in this regard we are saying that because of the way in which the police have been behaving certain times some elements in the Ghana police force 
that we have to be very vigilant with respect to the investigations which they do. Yes. And we are going to be calling for independent forensic examinations of the evidence. Yes. Because this fellow here and the CID that I bring back that been there and then come back again yeah. and, the, and the set of groups that he bring there with him, yeah. they are known for tampering with evidence. True. So have independent investigations into these matters. Thank you. And so I just want to say that anything that happens here in this community, anything that happens anywhere in any guy in this community becomes internationalized now. The world has become a, a smaller village. And so everything that happens anywhere, people everywhere know about it. So your, your, the plight of your, your family, the plight of this community is well known. Are we going to continue to hammer it? We're going to continue to fight. And I want to say again also to this family that we would wish to offer our support and we'd like to provide the expenses related to the burial of your son. We are going to take care of it. All right. Thank you. And when any other body come in this community with with basketball or little baby toys or little shopping bag. Tell them that your administration, your coalition was here already. Another member of parliament. Yeah, yeah. We have strong lawyers who stand foot to foot with you. Thank you. And we have many other young lawyers like that. Yeah. And the PVP already started yeah. with Yes, yes. They stand up there and they stand up there with the clients day in, day out. Four, five, six hours waiting. They're not moving. That is the kind of tenacity which we have. And that is the kind of representation we are guaranteeing you as the opposition. Because as you all know, this is a very temporary status for us. Because we will move them out of office in a very short yes, period. Yes, yes. Until such time, I ask that you remain vigilant, remain mobilized, and ensure that we always stay connected to our leadership. Your MPs are here, your party leadership is here. Let us stay connected. Don't let people come and intervene and interfere with this relationship until your bond is and met all kind of promises. All right? So that's what I want to say to you this morning. And again, um, I give sympathy, my sympathy and the condolences of the members of parliament that are here and all the others who are watching. But many of them said they wanted to come up here this morning with me. But I said, COVID and so on, we don't want everybody to be popped up at the same time. So over the next couple of days, you will see other representatives from the MP and, uh, and members of parliament coming to you, talking to you, reassuring you that you have a full support. All right? So thank you very much. Yeah. Folks, the leader of the opposition, Joseph Harmon, President David Granger, uh, giving their condolences to members of the family.